What is Prosperity Homestead about? Hi, I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. I want to answer some of the questions that seem to be controversy to some people. But when you visit Prosperity Homestead, you're going to see that we help affluent homeowners and communities increase property values through ecologically sound solutions. Now that throws people off because I'm talking specifically to affluent folks and permaculture has this egalitarian uh, you know, angle to it. What I've seen in the real world is that if there isn't a monetary value to something, if there isn't a, a lifestyle or home value to something, then most people won't do it. Uh, like the saying is, if it don't if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. If you can implement ecologically sound landscaping practices, home gardening, homestead uh, efforts, and become more financially stable, and that's what affluence is, the, the ability to sustain a, uh, an environmental event like the uh, COVID-19, uh, having 12 months of food at home, whether it's dried goods, canned goods, it's, it's your own home canning, uh, that is affluence. Now, many times, once you get your core household uh, food and security items taken care of, you'll start holding on to more of the wealth that you produce, and that wealth becomes an accumulation. So the simple example is a farmer plants a seed. That seed properly cultivated always produces more than what the farmer planted. And if that seed is true to seed, then you can plant some of the harvest again and again. You see in, in primitive cultures the, uh, the rule of keeping back a tenth of the crop. So that's your tithing. Uh, if you plant a grain crop and you keep one-tenth of the grain crop, you'll be able to plant again the equal volume of your previous crop. Now, in this situation where you've saved 10% and now you can replant the crop, the other 90% can be, can be consumed as food. It can be sold or traded with your neighbors. It can become part of the community value. And that's what we're looking at here at Prosperity Homestead. Uh, we have a demonstration site. It's not perfect. It, I make mistakes here and there, and there's some things that I can improve over time. But as you discover the implementation of an element combined with your local environmental factors, rainfall, temperature, all these things coming together, you're going to learn that a lot of the things you see on these YouTube videos is BS. A lot. If And I learned this from experience. If you're sitting around videotaping all the work that you're doing, you're not actually doing a whole lot of work. And that's why I have this backlog of podcasts and videos and stuff because I stopped and I said, look, what's most important? Is it more important to have fresh vegetables in the fall or have a, another YouTube video? Is it more important to have the herbs and the spices that I enjoy and that I'd like to have fresh or another podcast? See, what's more important is what, what goes on in your family. Now, my emphasis is modeling historical estates. I am fascinated by the Biltmore Estate. I am fascinated by Renolda. I'm, I'm fascinated by these large historical estates, uh, Monticello, that in incorporated the agricultural systems and the environmental systems that supported the lifestyle of the family. Now, I do know that many of these estates were built and never actually used. Some of the states were built big on purpose so that they could be leased out. So even though they didn't have Airbnb back then, there were folks that built big 32-room mansions, lived in two or three rooms, and rented out the rest of the rooms or, or held parties and had friends stay over, uh, used it as a social connection. And I'm very aware of that, and it's a system that works very well. Now, food security and healthy food choices is even more important. Now, the affluent already have healthy food choices and they have food security. But what we're discovering more than ever before is that much of the food that we're buying at the grocery stores actually isn't very healthy for us. And food grown at home or within a few miles of your home through partnering with local farmers has a nutritional index that's far beyond anything you can get in the grocery store. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. First off, eating fresh in-season vegetables and even in-season meats that are animals that have been raised humanely and, and, and very low stress, um, it gets to your plate faster. 
uh, it has retained nutrients. That same product shipped across the country or across the world would not be able to retain the quality and the texture and the value of that. You combine local foods with local restaurants and local uh, value-added providers, and now you've got food with culture, food with the next level of value. Uh, we, we did a number of programs about fermentation. All around the world, cultures, uh, uh, cultures which is part of fermentation, uh, have developed their own fermentation methods from sauerkraut to uh, kimchi. These things are so fresh that the food is actually a living organism. Um, if you look at kimchi under a microscope, a good quality kimchi actually has creatures in it. Uh, our body's covered with creatures. And this is something that, that we acknowledge in uh, Prosperity Homestead and we acknowledge in our implementation. But again, if it doesn't have some monetary edge to it or value, nobody's going to do it. Uh, why would someone who makes a lot of money want to do uh, a ecologically sound uh, landscape. Well, they might do it for bragging rights, but they might also do it because they know that you can't buy good health. And see, that's been a big criticism. A lot of people say, well, look, you know, this stuff, you should teach it to the poor people. Well, poor people can't pay me to show up to teach it. Poor people can't pay to implement it right now. And poor people tend to follow around what the rich people do. Like, that's why we have lawns today. If you weren't aware, lawns were something only wealthy people had. And then suddenly, everybody wants to have what the wealthy people have, and now we all have lawns. Lawns are the largest consumer of fresh water anywhere on the planet. They're the most cultivated crop anywhere on the planet, and they consume the majority of our fertilizers they can contribute to runoff and waste issues, and it's really a poor use of space. So again, some people might be offended by showing up and saying, oh, this guy is teaching, perma you know, he's implementing permaculture with wealthy individuals and, uh, you know, service contractors and landscapers, and he's, he's applying best management practices. Best management practices are government regulation. No, look. I'm focusing on resorts. I'm focusing on affluent families. I'm focusing on landholders because they have the property which could be converted from a non-productive non use to a highly productive use in the context of nature. It is so much better to have a, a unusable space turned into an ecological space, uh, like, for example, turning a swamp into a wildlife preserve, or turning a, 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 the edges of a river in, in, in the, uh, the flood zone into trails than it is to plow it over and build houses on it. Or, uh, you know, even if they're high density, you know, financially uh, accessible homes. Um, the reason why is because we need these green spaces to clean the air. We need these green spaces to replenish our health. And if, you know, if the poor people don't have any money, how are they going to pay for it? So let's go focus on that beautiful community that when you drive through, it, you're just amazed. But instead of stale, uh, sanitized grasses and everybody has the same trees and plants, let's go into an environmentally friendly envir uh, situation where there's a small bird habitat, where there's uh, beneficial insects, where there's home gardens, where there's edible and, and value-added plants, uh, where we develop this community at a scale that can keep on going. Every intentional community who has decided to uh, push off the capitalistic whatever whatevers has failed. Now, the ones that succeed often find their own monetary systems of barter and exchange. They often find ways to build beautiful homes that increase in value over time. They always develop a sense of community, the successful ones, uh, that help each other. And that it, sincerely, when you go visit or you take a tour of these places, you, it feels great. Well, let's get there and let's get there quick. And we're going to get there by uh, ha ecologically rational erosion control systems, the use of cover, cover crops, even in urban spaces, holistic land management where we keep large green tracks 
uh, and we 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 cultivate the lake. We reduce the amount of uh, runoff and waste that goes into those lakes. For example, uh, golf courses don't have to be uh, deserts of grass. Uh, there are a number of examples where resorts and country clubs have created such a a beautiful and and well maintained environment from a biological perspective that the golf course almost fertilizes itself. Uh, and you see this with the PGA Tour, by the way. Some of the the roughs of the PGA Tour are beautiful rapian areas, and if you know what you're looking at, you're going to see it. I believe there's a re- there are regional food deserts that can be solved by by taking the gourmet and local food to the next level. Uh, imagine a small farmer's market where there wasn't even a grocery store before. That's only possible through patrons and through supporters who want to move forward this environmental value. Uh, lack of green spaces. Nothing adds property values to a community, especially an urban community space, is rather than vacant lots, is to have these little pop-up gardens or these pop-up green spaces where people can sit and relax and socialize. Even a couple basketball courts or a couple tennis courts along with a nice grassy space and a little sitting area is better than uh, the courts by themselves. Uh, These are places people can get together. Uh, We also talk about green space at schools. Students need the ability to get out relax and get some fresh air. So why not support the cross-country team, the lacrosse team, the soccer team, the baseball team, and build around those stadiums a beautiful park-like environment where people can enjoy. This stuff doesn't happen on its own. It is expensive to do these environmental things because it's not popular. And it does look like from outside that the the great vast nature abundance is being uh, hoarded by the affluent, but it's being made possible by their tax dollars. It's being made possible by their uh, their contributions. So why not help them do it more readily and help improve their lifestyles of themselves and others and so that those who mimic their behaviors will pick up better behaviors. Nothing is worse than five acres of grass you got to mow every week. Um, You could turn half of that into wildflowers, patterned gardens. Uh, You could turn that into uh, waterscapes and garden combinations. And it's just, nobody's going to argue with the beauty. Uh, The last point is that we do talk about biological remediations. A lot of these solutions for schools and parks and uh, country clubs and, uh, you know, city park environments or urban spaces is not biologically friendly and includes a lot of sprays and and, um, a lot of runoff challenges that are not addressed. Uh, I like to see clean waterways. I like to see healthy environments, public spaces um, that are not necessarily uh, tax funded. Um, There's nothing wrong with a beautiful... uh, We have a couple of venues here that are on private property and they host uh, festivals and events every year and they are using the funds from those events to cultivate agriculture, to, to support agriculture. These are the things that we have. So again, when you go out and visit www.prosperityhomestead.org, a lot of folks are going to be offended. That's okay. You're not my customer. As a permaculture design consultant, as somebody who solves big problems in environmental and business systems, um, I'm going to do things a little different. I'm going to use the certifications that are available. For example, we're a certified backyard habitat. I'm going to use state and federal level business best practices that demonstrate them used in the context of an environmentally friendly uh, program. I'm going to borrow from historical sites and universities and also independent researchers and demonstrate what really works in a practical way. And yes, I'm going to do my best to, to make curb appeal property values and other things increase. And I'm going to show you how to do the same. I'm going to show you how to gain affluence through an environmentally supported lifestyle that delivers to you fresh food and vegetables, uh, economic and personal security. It delivers to you healthy environments for your children and the other children in your school districts and uh, insights on how to build communities into uh, well-standing, independent areas of value that that really build on each other's strengths. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. If you've got questions about this or anything else that we cover, 
visit us at www.prosperityhomestead.org. I'd love to hear about your questions, even some of the ridiculous comments people make. Um, but ultimately, uh, we're going to run a facility that is something that you can do. And it's something that if done at its scale and, and through even affluent communities, uh, is going to change your life. It's going to really make a difference to how you live, your health, your well-being, your prosperity. Thanks for listening.